That's my pawn you just eaten. <laughs> yeah? Oh, well, I'd moved it anyway. Now what do you think you're doing? I'm moving my queen. That ain't your queen, that's my bishop. The salt cellar's my queen. <laughs> no, it ain't. The pepper pot's your queen. If you don't know your pieces, I'm going to play properly. Have you been moving anything else of mine? Oh, I don't know now. <laughs> that ain't up yours. Yeah. <laughs> I'll have moved it. Twice. <laughs> <laughs> that's my king's rook, that is. Oh, that's it, isn't it? I mean, that's cocked up my Sicilian defence. <laughs> oh, it's waste the time carrying on. I mean, I was trying out Novachensky's opening gambit from the World Championships. No wonder it won't come off. Oh, look, we've got to get a proper set if we're going to play properly. <coughs> All right, set him up again. We'll give it another go. Is it Mr Albert Stepto live here? Yeah, he does. So the old fella's still alive, eh? Yeah, he's alive, just. Well, it's like he's <laughs> just standing out here like a couple of raw prawns, eh? <laughs> Come in, please. Uh, he's through there, in the lounge. Well, well, well! Who are you? <laughs> you don't recognise me, do you? No. Uh, it's not surprising. It's 45 years since you last saw me. I was a knee-eye to an abo's wife front when I left. <laughs> oh, I'm Arthur. Arthur? Arthur? Yeah, Arthur. Arthur. Arthur? Yeah. Arthur? It can't be. Not... Arthur. Arthur, yeah, Arthur. <laughs> Harold, it's Arthur. <laughs> Is it? I can't believe it after all these years. Little Arthur. Ah, old fella, now don't get yourself so upset. Let's have a Captain Cook at you. Yeah, I'd never forget you. A bit small, a bit older, but I'd never forget you. <laughs> Arthur, Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, uh, Harold. This is your brother. <laughs> I've got no brother. Yes, you have, son. Arthur. Arthur? Yeah. Arthur. He's your elder brother. I don't be daft. I'm an only child. I've always been an only child. <laughs> Arthur's your stepbrother. Mr... What do you mean, stepbrother? <laughs> well, I met Arthur's mother before I met your mother. I see. And? Well, we was engaged for six years. And then one night I couldn't control myself anymore. <laughs> and after that, she went off me. I'm not bloody well surprised. <laughs> and then Arthur come along. But she wouldn't marry me. She got in the cricket club. <laughs> she said athletics and, and marriage didn't mix. And then she got picked for the women's cricket team to Australia. Leg spinner she was. And I never saw her again. And then I met your mother and that was that. A very nice story. That's very savoury. How many more little bastards you got spread around the world? <laughs> Don't you talk to me like that. Well, you certainly used to put it around, didn't you? You never told me that you had another son. Well, so long ago. I haven't seen him since he was two years old. I never even knew if he was still alive. Well, I am alive. And kicking. So you're my kid brother, eh? Such would appear. Well, I reckon this calls for a celebration. Does it? Yeah. Let's open up a few tubes of Foster's. I brought some with me. They said it was harder to find over here than an Arab at a bar mitzvah. I reckon your beer is flatter than a witch's tip. There you go. <laughs> Have a real drink. To the Stepto family. Long may it be reunited. To me two sons. Ah. Come on, Harold, drink up. Cheers. Oh, cripes, I needed that. And my mouth was as dry as a kangaroo's jockstrap. <laughs> <laughs> There's so much I want to ask you, Arthur. But, um, first things first, where are you staying? Well, as a matter of fact, Pop, I uh, haven't made up my mind yet. I've just fallen out of the flame and aeroplane. But I understand there's millions of DOS houses up around the Earl's Court, so I suppose I'll make my way up oh, there and... No, you don't want to do that. Why not? You can stay here with us. We ain't got no room. 
course we have. We're make room. You don't want your brother staying with strangers. He's only arrived all the way from Australia. You can have Harold's room. Hey, wait a minute. Harold can put up a bed down here for the time being. Down here? That's very decent of you, Harold. I'm obliged to you. Yeah, but, but, but well, you... that's settled then. Ah, very nice. Oh, I must say, it's great to be back in the old country again. I can't tell you, Dad, what it means to me to meet you again. Man, young Harold. A fine boy. Yeah, a man needs roots. Roots? You're not stopping it. I mean, long. I mean, it is a holiday. Well, as a matter of fact, I'm thinking of settling down here for good. I've been about a bit, you know. I've done a bit just about everything. Cattle driving, sheep shearing, walkabout, gold mining, pearl fishing. Oh, how marvellous. Yeah, it's much better than it is over here. You'll be bored to tears here. All we've got here is the bingo and the telly. <laughs> yeah, it's rotten when the rainy season starts and all. Rain? Love it. Love it. When you spend as long as I have in the outback, you've no idea how beautiful a drop of rain is. No, no, I'm getting a bit too long in the tooth for gallivanting. I think it's time for me to settle right down. And where better than in good old pommy land with your old dad and your kid brother? Excuse <laughs> me. How long are you going to keep my taxi waiting out here? Found the flaming crows. I forgot all about you. Five pound ten, please. Five pound ten? Five pound ten. And I turned the clock off when you got out of the cab. Yeah, maybe you did, but I think you turned the bastard on when I left Melbourne. It's still <laughs> five pound ten. What, to drive me from London Airport? I'm not a flaming darky, you know. It's still five pound ten. Five pound ten. Um, Harold, I don't seem to have any pommy money on me. I wonder if you'd mind paying Ned Kelly here. What, five pounds, ten? Yeah, give the man the money, Harold. I'll give it back to you. Too right, as soon as I've cashed me travellers' checks. Of course he will. Oh, it's marvellous to see you again, Arthur. <laughs> How's your mother? Oh, Patrice sad. Sorry to say, the old woman passed on last month. Oh, dear. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very sorry. Yeah, it came as a great shock. Never been crook in her life. Active right up to the last. What happened to her? Keeled over with a half-shaved merino ram between her legs. <laughs> <laughs> New South Wales Searing Championships, it was. She would have won, too. 39 seconds left and she only had the back legs to go. <laughs> oh, great tragedy. Yeah. Yeah, she was onto a whole carton of swan lager, too. Not that that would have lasted long, you understand. <laughs> here, you want another ink? Right, and I'll go in here. Yeah. Did she ever, uh, marry? Oh, no, no, not her. She shacked up for a while with an eye tie plonk grower, but, uh, <laughs> uh, he used to beat the bejesus out of her, and one night he'd come home, real Adrian Christie was, and she bashed him over the head with a bottle of his uh, vino reddo. She loaded up the Ford and we didn't stop for 300 miles. <laughs> <laughs> My mother was a school teacher. <laughs> So it's a lovely woman, my mother was. I don't believe a drop of alcohol ever passed her lips, did it, father? Oh, no. Not your mother. Salvation Army, she was. Yeah, that's <laughs> what. Very pious lady. Yeah? Oh, it's strange how a fella can have two Sheila's so different, eh? <laughs> oh, it's very amusing. Yeah. Well, well, now that you're home, Arthur, we'd better start making plans for your future. What plans? Well, now he's come to stay with us, he'd have to think about work, won't he? Work? Oh, yeah, what well, good idea. I'll take you down to the Labour Exchange first thing in the morning. They're taking a new tube across London, and I know they uses a lot of Commonwealth Labour. No, wait a minute. <laughs> I didn't travel 12,000 miles just to dig my way across flame in London. I'm so sorry. Perhaps you as a trade or a profession. Well, uh, no, not exactly. No. Uh, Neither of you. Oh, no, I'm different. I mean, I don't need one. I got my own business. Well, it's a family business, and Arthur's family. He can come in with us. Hi. Yeah. You're always moaning about how hard you have to work. Arthur can take some of the load off you. I'll make him a partner. That's a very generous offer, which I'm delighted to accept, Pop. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. No, no, no. I've sweated my guts out building up this business. I'm not going to stand by and watch a perfect stranger walking in. Not a perfect stranger. He is to me. He isn't to me. He's my son. Yeah. Me elder son. No, no. Leave him, leave him be, Bob. Leave him be. He'll get over it. That's come as a bit of a shock to the young fella, me turning up like that out of the blue. He's bound to be a bit jealous. I can't understand it after all I've done for him. Well, he'll get over it. Just give him time. 
In the meantime, I think I'll go upstairs and uh, clean up a bit. But first, I'll pop outside and point Percy at the porcelain. And then... <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. I'm going to take you and young Harold up to town and buy you some slap-up tucker in a bonza frog calf. <laughs> Marvellous. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, just one thing, Dad. Uh, I wonder if you could see your way clear to lending me a few quid. Uh, just until I get me traveller's checks cashed, you understand? Of course. Anything you want. Five? Ten? Yeah, I'd better make it twenty. Uh, no, on second, I'll make it around fifty, then I won't have to keep coming back to you. Fifty it is. Oh, it's good to see you again, Arthur. You don't know what this means to me, having me two sons around me. You've made an old man very happy. Well, it's great to be back home, Dad. <laughs> oh, oh, wait a minute, I've got a little prezzy for you. So it's official then, is it? He's rowed himself in. Yeah, he, he's agreed to join the firm, yeah. I don't suppose you needed much persuading. Well, I can't understand you taking this attitude. Why are you so bitter against him? He is your brother. How do you know? You've never seen him before. I mean, a middle-aged that work Australian turns up here. You've never seen him. It could be anybody. He says he's your son, and you believe him. You're so gullible. Oh, he's my son, all right. All them photographs he showed me of me and him and his mother, and the things he told me he could never have known of yet. Oh, he's me son, all right. He's got my ears and me nose. <laughs> and your money. <laughs> Where is he now? He's up in bed. I just took his breakfast up. See? You never brought me my breakfast up in my life. <laughs> it's another thing. It makes me sick to see the way you runs round after him. I don't run round after him. Get him up, then. If he's a partner, let him do his full share. And he can't. He's not well. It's our weather, playing up his old war wound. Oh, he's got a war wound too, has he? He runs in a family, don't he? <laughs> Nobody else can do any work around here except for me. He was a prisoner of war of the Japanese. Oh, but they were bleeding glad to get rid of him, I know. <laughs> he certainly ain't seen the rising sun since he's been here. <laughs> You're very bitter, Harold. It's not like you. It is like me. You don't know me, do you, eh? Forty years you've had me, four days you've had him, and he knows him better than you knows me. Sitting up all night, yarning with him and laughing with him, I've heard you, and buying him drinks. That's another thing. He soon got used to our rotten beer, hasn't he? You know what, I'm jealous, I'm bitter, I am resentful. But it's dark bollock on a block and work as hard as I can. That's it. Giving him on a plate to a fellow ain't put nothing into the business. Ah, oh, that's where you're wrong, he has. He's put up his shares in lieu of capital. His shares? What shares? He's invested all his money in an Australian nickel mine. You've heard of Poseidon. Has he got shares in that? No, the one next door to it. <laughs> the Poseidon Reef runs right under his land. Oh, my God. Oh, he's got the lot there. Nickel, gold, opals, tin, steel... Bread pudding, marmalade... <laughs> you daft pillock. You, you, you can't have a steel mine. You make steel. You'd believe anything, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's better than Poseidon. Everything he's got's on top. You don't have to dig for it. <laughs> he's got oil, too. Naturally, yes. Yeah. Oh, right on top. He reckons if you walk across his land in a pair of spike boots, you leave a trail of little gushers behind you. <laughs> and you believe all this? Of course I do. He told me. That is a con man. He's a nebbish. He's a punce. You don't like him, do you? <laughs> no, I don't like him. You'll never give me no boomerang. <laughs> Be sick to see the way you've been taken in by him. You ain't got time for me anymore. Oh, that's not true. It is true. I mean, the way you run drone after him. You think the sun shines out of his ear holes? <laughs> I, mean, all I, 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 I don't exist anymore. Oh, no. It's, it's only natural that a man should have some affection for his firstborn. What? 
Well, you five of them if you want to, but I'm warning you, I'm not going to stand by and see everything that I've worked for handing on a plate to one of your illegitimate sprogs. <laughs> Is enough for all of us? Where? Oh, show me where. Now how many more's going to turn up once the word gets around? None. There's only you and Arthur. I mean, you side more bleeding off springs than an Aberdeen Angus, you know. <laughs> stuck on a stud farm with a rosette behind your ear hole. <laughs> then you'd have a morning of business, wouldn't you? We'll finish up with a bigger board than ICI's got. <laughs> no, we won't. There'll only be the three of us. You've been very childish, Harold. Arthur's just the man for this firm. We've never had a, a good financial brain run in the business. Thank you very much. I've managed perfectly well up to now. Well, Arthur says our books is in a shocking state. Oh, you sold him the books, have you? You had no right. I don't want every Tom, Dick or Harry knowing how much director's fees I have been voted. Well, <laughs> he says the first thing he wants to change is our in and out column. Oh, but he does. I'll put it all in. He takes it all out. <laughs> he knows what he's talking about, does Arthur. And I don't. Well, I don't blame you. You do your best. It's only that Arthur... Well... He's got a better education than you have. Everybody's got a better education than I have. I spent more time on the Orson Cart than I ever did in school. Well, you didn't like school. You was always up in the wag. Well, that's no reason for not sending me. You, you should made me go. I couldn't. You were too big. <laughs> you were heavier than me when you was 11. <laughs> I tried to make you to go to school, but you kept... Threatening to wallop me. What? <laughs> when I was 11? Yeah, I was frightened of you. Couldn't control you. I tried to send you to Borstal, but they wouldn't have you. <laughs> Again, thank you very much. What an idyllic childhood I did have. Well, it's true. It ain't true. I never stood a chance, mate. I mean, a number of times you assessed to me, I don't go to school today, it's a lovely day. Why don't you come out and around, get a bit of fresh air? No wonder I couldn't keep up. Well, you didn't use to mind. Of course I didn't mind. I was so far behind at school, it was humiliating. I was kept back in the same class for three years running. I was the only bloke in the juniors in long trousers. <laughs> if I'd have got into the army, I never would have been able to learn to read and write. You crippled my mind, you did. Now you blame it all on me. And I could have been a doctor. Or a band leader or something. <laughs> I always liked music. That's another thing you never helped me with. I mean, my teacher said that I was musically inclined and you ought to encourage me. But you wouldn't buy me a piano, would you, now? You taught me how to whistle instead. <laughs> I brought you that piano off the round. It had 32 notes missing. <laughs> I wouldn't even play chopsticks on it. Every time I did play, the lid used to fall right across my fingers. Aversion therapy, they call that today. No, mate, I never stood a chance. Well, it's no use blaming me for your own shortcomings. I'm Arthur's father, too, and he's doing all right. Oh, because he got away from you. Well, I wish it had been the other way around. I wish I'd have been the illegitimate one. I wish I'd have been taken away. If I'd amounted to something then, I could tell you. I would have turned out a bloody sight better than he is. I never knew you wanted to be a band leader. <laughs> you never bothered to find out, did you, eh? That's another thing I can't forgive, because you just wasn't interested. You were more concerned with yourself than you was with my future. And now what little bit I've managed to build up for myself. You want me to share it with someone else. Well, it's not on, Dad. You're going to have to choose. It's either me or him. Oh, that's not fair, Harold. You can't ask a man to choose between his sons just like that. That's OK. It's dead simple. Either he goes or I goes. Make up your mind. I can't, Harold. Right, that's it. Then. Harold! No, no, I should have gone years ago. I had to stay here and look after you. Well, it's different now. It's his turn. It's all changed. Forty years, I've had you. It's his go. And God help you, mate. <laughs> but what about the business? Let him run the business, if you can get him up, that is. Oh, no, Harold. Harold, he can't go now. Not now. It's time to go out on the round. I've completed my last round for this firm. Well, who's going to do it, then? May I suggest that you tippy time to the house and turf Wallaby Jim of the Islands out? <laughs> Give him a map, put him on a cart, and let him get on with it. 
He won't be able to drive that horse. You know she won't go out with anyone but you. No one else can handle her. Then I suggest he sells some of his nickel shares and buys himself a kangaroo. <laughs> he should be home with one of them. He'll be able to hop round in no time. Now, Harold! Yeah. I'm starting that on my own. No, no, Harold! Goodbye! No, Harold, don't go. Come back, I need you. Yeah. <laughs> He'll be back. What's that? Afternoon. <laughs> The old war wounds playing me up again. Oh, now I know how you must feel, Dad. Oh, oh still, perhaps in a couple of days, I'll be able to get up and uh, give you a hand round the station. Yeah, that time. Yeah, well, I've been uh, going through the books again, Dad. I haven't just been laying up there scratching me kaboonie, you know. <laughs> and I've come up with one or two ideas. Now, it seems we give young Harold ten shillings a day for his lunch. Now, I reckon if we give him sandwiches instead, that would be a net saving of about... He's oh, gone. Gone? Gone where? He's walked out. Oh, that is a blow. <laughs> Still, he'll be back when his gut starts rumbling. Uh, in the meantime, Dad, I wonder if you could see your way clear to lending me another fiver. There's a horse running at Kempton Park this Yeah, afternoon. and there's another one out in the stable, raring to go as well. <laughs> Get your clothes on. <laughs> Son. What's it doing there? I've been looking for you for three weeks now. Oh, yeah? Lonnie Jenkins told me where you were. Uh, the landlady let me in. Uh, I'll put a shilling in. There is no need to, thank you very much. I'm quite capable of taking care of my own beating. Well, what brings you in this neck of the woods then? Well, I was worried about you. Haven't heard from you. In I was wondering how you were getting along. Oh, quite well, thank you. I do very nicely. Mm. Staying on here, then? Oh, good heavens, no! This is only temporary accommodation. <laughs> to find something more suitable. Now, I've seen a very nice little muse cottage what I'm thinking of renting. <laughs> <laughs> You're doing all right, then? Oh, yes. Yes, I'm uh, very nice. The business is coming on fine. You got a horse and cart, then? Oh, yes, I'm uh, very pleased with it. It's a uh, four-year-old sauce, 17 hands. It's a beautiful animal. I'm especially pleased with the carp. It's brand new, of course. Bigger than yours. But then I need to have it for the volume of trade, what I'm doing. Oh, good. <laughs> Aren't you going to put jam on it? You always like jam, on it. I ain't got no jam. So I'm on a diet, so I could give nut jam. Yeah, I mean, we, we, we eat too much, we businessmen. We're digging our graves with our own teeth, as my specialist puts it. <laughs> Harold. Yeah? Come on, Harold, please. I've been through all that before. I don't see the advantage of discussing it anymore. I need you, Harold. The, the, the business needs you. I'm sure your new business manager can look after it perfectly well. He's gone. He's gone? Where? Hopped it. 
back to Australia, I think. You were right, Harold. He, he was a, a punce, a lazy, no good con man. <laughs> I told you, a blow like him, he wouldn't take the awesome car out. Oh, he took it out, all right. It's the trouble he didn't bring it back. <laughs> Flogged it. Uh, never seen him since. Swine. Now, well, what to expect? They're not all like me, you know. I don't know what to do. I only got a horse and cart now. Please, Harold, come back. I, I can't manage on my own. I don't know about that. Uh, I would like to help you, really, I would. But it's, it's going to be very difficult. I mean, I've got a whole yard full of people depending upon me now. Because I, I, I wouldn't ask you to close up just like that. I thought we might come to a business arrangement, put it on a proper business footing, a merger between your firm and mine. <laughs> we could call it Stepto and Stepto. A reverse takeover, you mean? <laughs> right? Yes, it's uh, quite a common arrangement when a small, thriving firm like mine appears to merge with a larger firm, but in effect takes it over. Yeah, that's very interesting, I must admit. I suppose we could enter into exploratory dialogue. Mind you, the assets of the both companies have to be fully analysed. I don't... Huh? That didn't last long, did it? She's got that well rigged. I ain't got no more shillings. Yeah, I only carry notes with me, you see. <laughs> Difficult. I'll tell you what, Harold. Why don't we carry on our explanatory dialogue back home? The fire's in, I banked it up before I left. Oh, well, well of course. I, I, I mean, psychologically, I will be at a disadvantage talking to you on your home ground. I got steak and kidney pie in the oven. I know. Have you? <laughs> <laughs> and sherry trifle. And, 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 and jam. Jam. I've got jam, too. Oh, yeah? Oh, well, I suppose the venue of the talks doesn't necessarily affect the outcome. Yes, I will concede the point. Right. Shall we go now? You do realise these is only exploratory talks? Oh, of course. Well, come on, what are we waiting for, don't we? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, yeah, you know my account is going to have to go right through your books. It's Arthur. <laughs> Is it? 
I can't believe it after all these years. Little Arthur. Ah, old fella, now don't get you so upset. Let's have a Captain Cook at you. Yeah, I'd never forget you. A bit smaller, a bit older, but I'd never forget you. <laughs> Arthur, Arthur. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, uh, Harold, this is your brother. Bro. I mean, I was trying out Novachensky's opening gambit from the World Championships. No wonder it won't come off. Oh, look, we've got to get a proper set if we're going to play properly. <coughs> All right, set him up again. We'll give it another go. Does Mr uh, Albert Stepto live here? Yeah, he does. So the old fella's still alive, eh? Yeah, he's alive, just. Well, it's like it was just standing out here like a couple of raw prawns, eh? Come in, please. Uh, he's through there, in the lounge. Well, well, well! Who are you? <laughs> you don't recognise me, do you? No. Uh, it's not surprising. It's 45 years since you last saw me. I was a knee-eye to an abo's wife front when I left. <laughs> oh, I'm Arthur! That's my pawn you just eaten. <laughs> yeah? Oh, well, I'd moved it anyway. Now, what do you think you're doing? I'm moving my queen. That ain't your queen, that's my bishop. The salt cellar's my queen. <laughs> no, it ain't. The pepper pot's your queen. Well, if you don't know your pieces, I'm going to play properly. Have you been moving anything else of mine? I don't know now. <laughs> that ain't up yours. Yeah. Well, I've moved it. Twice. <laughs> that's my king's rook, that is. Oh, that's it, isn't it? I mean, that's cocked up my Sicilian defence. <laughs> oh, it's waste the time carrying on. Yes, you have, son. Arthur. Arthur? Yeah. Arthur. He's your elder brother. I don't be daft. I'm an only child. I've always been an only child. <laughs> Arthur's your stepbrother. Mr... What do you mean, stepbrother? <laughs> well, I met Arthur's mother before I met your mother. I see. And? Well, we was engaged for six years. And then one night I couldn't control myself anymore. <laughs> and after that, she went off me. I'm not bloody well surprised. <laughs> and then Arthur came along. But she wouldn't marry me. She got in the cricket club. <laughs> she said athletics and, and marriage didn't mix. 